Are you serious? Yes, this is How To Kill An Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. And my name is Marcus Bronzy. There's plenty of ways to funk Butcher out here. Thank you for Billy writing with us. That's quite good. Yeah. It's How To Kill An Hour, man. The show which is about killing time. We talk about different ways to kill time. We yes. kill time talking about time killing. And everything in between the killing of time and time killed before... Ki- yeah, I fucked that up. Hello, I'm Marcus Bronzy. Hello, I'm Funk Butcher. This is How To Kill An Hour, the show where we find ways to kill time so you don't have to. Uh, we usually kick off the show discussing a different way that one of us has killed some time. We call it our killer bit, how one has killed a bit of time. Mr. Butcher, that is Funk, how mm-hmm. have you killed a bit of time this week? I've been killing some time geeking out. What have we been geeking out with this week? More specifically, geeking out in regards to the Marvel franchise. The Marvel franchise is going into overdrive. They're flexing their cinematic pecs mm. at DC. Mm-hmm. They're saying, come at me, bro. Mm-hmm. Come at me. Mm-hmm. And most mm-hmm. recently, they've done that with the recent um, news, um, which was put out by... On Twitter, he's known as Van City Reynolds. It's Ryan Reynolds' uh, Twitter handle. And he's put out some images, dramatic pause, of Cable. Now, this might not mean anything. This is absolutely crazy for me. We have waited years, years, years since the animated version of the X-Men to see a visual um, uh, adaptation um in 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 cinema form okay, live so, cinema form so i am not a cinema or a marvel guy yeah please describe who cable is to me okay so cable is this kind of like this mercenary from the future he's got this kind of this cyborg eye and um you see i want to i want to talk more about it but i don't want to spoil it but he's linked to the x-men he's got a very um famous brother within the X-Men main camp, but no one really knows who he is because not even his brother knows that's, that they're related because Cable is from the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but Cable is linked. Um, uh, he's going to be linked in the franchise in a Deadpool movie. So uh, I can't wait for that Deadpool 2 that's coming out real, real, real soon. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've been kind of probing is that can we see a cable integration into the X-Men franchise. And someone tweeted at me earlier on this morning saying that the problem with that is because the franchises are owned by different studios, we may not be able to get that Deadpool crossover um, that a lot of us will be hoping for. There's there's an amazing story arc called Executioner's Song, which involves Cable, um, the X-Men, Apocalypse, um, a character called Strife, which is the clone of Cable sent from the future. He's a terrorist. And we would love to see that story arc. Um, just to add as well that Josh Brolin. What an actor. Josh Brolin. What an actor. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant actor. You might have known him. You know, he'll, he's one of his biggest roles has been in Men in Black 3. Yeah. Where he plays the young K, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like one of the many films yeah. he's in. But that's probably like one of the most obvious ones. Like That's not an example of his stellar acting. Yeah. Even though he's really good. What's your favourite Josh Brolin film? What's the film that was a Chinese remake where they lock a guy in a room and he has to break out? Okay, Old Boy. Is that what it is? Old yeah, Boy? Yeah, Old Boy. I found that I don't usually like creepy films like that, but his acting was amazing because a lot of the acting he did in that film was to himself. Okay. What you need to see Josh Brolin in is Sicario. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, um, Sin City. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Josh Brolin is the very um, amazing um, actor. He's got a lot of stage and screen presence he is killing it in the marvel world for a lot of some reason some may not be aware of because he's actually playing two characters within the marvel universe josh brolin is cable but he's also the square headed square jawed thanos that's great so do you think so he there's potential he looks unimpressed there's potential where he could actually fight himself yes exactly Right. Which it may do. I mean, if they tie, get the contracts right and, and whatnot, the contract, the studio that owns Deadpool and Cable, I believe can factor Cable into the new Avengers film. So mm. hopefully we might see that um, battle of the selves. Mm. I look forward to it. 
I look forward to it. So what got you excited about it? So your so cable got you excited. Yeah. Woohoo. And is it just another Marvel film that is daring to take it past the Disney kind of side of things? They're daring to show you more blood, more guts and stuff like that. Is that what's exciting you about the new Deadpool film? Because I know that's what got me that's what gets me with Deadpool yeah. and, and Logan. Yeah. I mean it's just literally one of those situations whereby it's just tapping into the nostalgia. Mm. The fact that you're seeing all the characters that they you actually gave up hope of actually seeing on live screen because it were taking so many years to develop. And some of it was, was um, a situation whereby it was caught up in, 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 legal, in a legal wrangle as to who owned what, the rights to who. Yeah. We finally got to a situation where we're kind of getting a true rendition of Spider-Man. We're, we're getting to a situation now that Todd McFarlane, this is going on to something else I've been checking out online. Todd McFarlane has, has agreed with the studios that made Get Out to bring back Spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So, and Spawn, as much as everyone is going about Black Panther being the first, um, well, people are saying it is one of the first kind of um, uh, depictions of a black superhero on screen. Yeah. Even though Blade was on um, in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. The Spawn film preceded both of those films. So technically Spawn is the first um, depiction of a black superhero mm-hmm. on screen. That's kind of owned. The company that owned that now, or that owned that at the time, were Marvel, I believe, before Todd, Todd McFarlane took um, the character away and created his own franchise called Image Studios. Yeah. The Todd McFarlane story is very, very, very interesting. It kind of harks to the whole generation now where music and musicians bucked against the trade of being owned by the bigger studio. So Todd McFarlane, he was most famous for um, drawing and writing the storylines for Spawn and Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man was where he got a lot of his... Um, uh, props props yeah. from yeah but he wasn't getting any royalties from that motherfuckers so marvel owned all the rights for the characters that he was creating and what he done he created a a, a platform called image studios and he basically said to all the writers and he cherry picked them from places like dc and and marvel at the time and he said any characters that you create under this umbrella company you get to keep the royalties too mm. so they retained a lot of the control of their um their creations so that was kind of brilliant in that age. And he has literally fought too for now to retain the control of his creations, which is probably why the next Spawn film was taking so long to come to the screens. And I look forward to it. I mean, you did speak about it in the, a lot in the last in the episode before last mm-hmm. about what mm-hmm. who Spawn is, mm-hmm. how it works. And I, I cannot wait for another direct... We should just, just call it ports now, innit? I can't mm-hmm. wait for the port yeah. of uh, the Spawn to film to come out, back over to the big screen again because... A lot of these con, a lot of these ideas from comic books are great, yeah. But they kind of wash out the grit, yeah. Which is what makes comic books amazing. Comic books were out before you could see this stuff visually. You yeah. just couldn't see, you couldn't have that level of imagination on the big screen. It just wasn't possible. Godzilla fighting Mecha Godzilla mm-hmm. did not look mm-hmm. fun. It looked mm-hmm. like two puppets dancing around. But in a comic book, you could be very graphic, visually stunning, yeah. and create these these worlds that were just literally out of this world. Yeah. You know, you could explore theories that you couldn't explore in any other kind of yeah. media form. And again, that's all thanks to the, the technology these days. There we go. We're getting to that stage where the, yeah. the, the piece de la resistance, mm. which is, I believe, going to be, when they make that announcement, Thundercats. Oof. That's that's coming. I mean, we're getting to a stage where, um, the I, I don't know if you know, the, the new um, Kong film. Yeah is actually teeing it up for Kong versus Godzilla. That Ooh. was the that was the whole kind of the, the premise of the island with the with the, the giant animals on that mm. island is is mm. teeing it up for for that um that picture that's gonna happen. So there was actually a moment within the the new Kong film starring um Samuel Jackson where you see signs of Mothra and if anyone knows about the whole Godzilla films, it's just a giant moth, basically. Yeah, there was there was the giant there's the giant lizard, yeah, Godzilla. Yeah. Mothra's the giant moth, yeah, uh, which is quite strong for a moth because in real life, lizard versus a moth, <laughs> I call one the predator and the other one lunch, and then you got Godzilla, 
And then you got like Mecha Godzilla, which yeah, is yeah. a robot Godzilla. Yeah. And then they're going to get fight King Kong. Yeah, yeah. Sick. Look forward to that. Yeah. Another way I was killing time, obviously, like 99.9% .9 of the world, I was jacked in to Game of Thrones. So, Billy, cover your ears. This most recent episode, okay, we're on season seven now. Mm -hmm. This has been going since 2011, would you believe it? So, like six years down. Yeah. The most, the most watched television franchise without, ever without a doubt you know the funny thing is though i wouldn't even rank it in my top five series of all time really no i wouldn't but it is very 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 entertaining it's a slow burner there's a lot of people that have watched season one mm. don't really get into it and they kind of stop but if you persist with it, it 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 does give you a few gems now season seven and this is literally a the closest thing that you can actually kind of relate it to is Lord of the Rings yeah. kind of meets um, a soap opera, basically. It's literally like Lord of the Rings meets meets EastEnders. Mm. <laughs> so mm. so mm. if you can put dragons in Albert Square, yeah, yeah, that's what you're kind of getting at with Game of Thrones. So, so this a, a soap opera with Lord of the Rings, yeah, a lot more of it to watch, yeah, and a lot more drama in it. Yeah. And obviously in soap opera, if you everyone could fuck their sister and brother, yeah. uncles and aunties, yeah. there's that in there as yeah, well. There's a lot of that. So, oh yeah, you've got a few zombies as well, I guess. Oh yeah, and zombies too. <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah. There's a lot of zombies in Albert Square. Yeah. <laughs> they come out of the pub. So, um, season seven, episode four is supposed to be um, one of the most, the, the most, the best episodes yeah. of the whole series. Yeah. It's literally kind of, they threw everything and the kitchen sink in terms of the CGI, the graphics, the stunts. Um, I just recently watched that. Season six had only 11 shots of this giant dragon. Whew. That one episode. That just screen, 11? 11 what shots in the season six though. In the whole of season six, I only had 11 shots of the dragon. Yeah. Last night's episode, which aired over here in the UK, had 80 shots of this dragon. So... If there's, I mean, there's a lot more of this um, season to go because this is supposed to be the the finale, the grand finale. So, is this is the last season. They they say that whether or not the 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 old uh, the old uh, guy behind this wants to kind of get out his pen and write a few more episodes to to keep the checks rolling in. What is it that keeps you in though, Funk? Is it the dragon? Is it the fucking? Is it the tits? Is it the story? Is it a combination of those? Because I'm getting chastised for this and I'm going to have to just give in to peer pressure. Yeah. I've not watched Game of Thrones. I watched the first season a long time ago. I saw your post on Didn't social clip. media. You're firing shots. In. What did I say? You're firing shots. You see, uh, okay, Billy, Marcus put up this post here on social media and it was a post of everyone in the pub, yeah? And everyone in the pub's face was like Game of Thrones faces and there was one guy's face that was like Rick and Morty. So it was like Marcus was alluding to the fact that he watches Rick and Morty as opposed to watching Game of... The, the majority watches Game of Thrones. That is, that is what I do, yeah. I've never seen Rick and Morty. Yeah. I've never seen it. That's, it's, it's, but it's that's, more, a, that's a very weird show. It's more me. It's like... um, I like sci-fi, don't I? Yeah. So fantasy's cool, but I like yeah. sci-fi. And yeah. Rick and Morty's a sci-fi cartoon. It's okay. like a sci-fi family guy, for want of a better set of words. So it's got comedy in it. Is it new? It's a couple of years old. Really? 2005, I think it came out. I think it did a season in 2015, sorry, 2015, apologies, 2015, okay. a season in 2016, mm -hmm. no, a season in 2014, season 2015, skipped a year last year and they've taken quite a long time to make this season. It's got quite a cult following, isn't it? A very cult following. It's part of the Adult Swim franchise, which is basically oh. Cartoon Network at night Okay, plays these cartoons because okay. kids are supposed to be in bed. Interesting. I just like it, man. It's, 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 it's out there, but it's not too yeah. out there. It's feasible. I'm not going to guess you. I mean... I can't, I can't pin it down to one specific thing about the Game of Thrones series, which kind of locks me in every mm. week. Mm. I feel like if this was running, if Game of Thrones was running at the same time you had Sopranos, The Wire, Breaking Bad, mm. Sons of Anarchy, oh. um, The Wire, The Wire, The Wire, The Wire. How about The Wire? <laughs> Omar's coming. <laughs> I don't think Game of Thrones would be getting the the kind of numbers it's it's getting now. It, mm. It's it's doing very, very well in a period of um, 
depression in terms of of um, TV series. I think like there's there's no um, House of Cards. It was there's no. Yeah. It, it's very calculated that when it chooses to air, not at the same time at, at other big boys. Okay. Even though it does have this established fan base and it's literally kind of got all aspects of the market engaged, it doesn't really run at the same time. I noticed. So it's like an album dropping. Mm -hmm. Like before people just did digital drops or they just dropped the album out of nowhere. It's when people used to strategically plan the day that they're dropping their music album. Yeah. So as to get maximum impact. Yeah. This is what they, that's, this is what Sky has done. Sorry, this is what HBO and Sky yeah. have done. I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because even today when I looked at um, Twitter, they said that a this film called The Dark Tower, The Dark Tower, what's, what else has opened up this weekend? Basically, the num if you remember Suicide Squad, yeah, is um, famously known for doing terrible, terrible, terrible numbers in the grand scheme of things. Every film this weekend hasn't done better than the numbers of that film. That just shows you how bad the the viewing figures are for the cinema this weekend. So it's like if you if you come out at a quiet time, you can get the number one spot. But it depends on who you're up against. It's interesting. So this is it. We've we've come to the point now, and this may have happened a few months, years ago, where officially television is more powerful than cinema. So no longer can we say the bigger the screen, the bigger the star. That yeah. is done now. Yeah. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. This is the first time in the history of media that we've had that sort of, I'm going to call it regression, but or turnaround. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So having your shit, and we did touch on this the other week, having stuff on Netflix can connect way more. Yeah. And on TV where you can like get, get it on demand, it can have way more yeah. of an impact than a film. Yeah. And I think social media has wow. played a big part in that. The shit. fact that, you're having a dialogue whilst the series is going on. It yeah. forces people. It's like free advertising. It's like that chat that people have at work at lunchtime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, exactly that. Show, but this is happening right now. Exactly that. Amazing. And Netflix is just cashing in. Trust me. Um, speaking of Twitter, Funk, over the past three months, according to Twitter's la latest earnings, they've grown by a mammoth, magnanimous zero. Zero. So 66 million less than what Facebook grew in the same period. Uh, period. Nine million fewer than Twitter grew in the first quarter of this year. Twitter has grown by zero. This upsets me, man. All this Twitter hateration in the dancery. <laughs> it really, really upsets me because as an avid Twitter user, you know me, it's mm. my favourite of yes, all the social... That's why i got to put this to you. Yeah. you you're the Twitter... Out of all of us, I'd say you are, you know, you're in the Twitter world. Yeah. If it was the Matrix, you'd be Morpheus or Neo. Twitter is bae. Yeah. Twitter can cheat, cheat on me and I'll still take her back. Take her back. Yeah. yeah just say, don't do it again. <laughs> and she'll do it again. You take her back again. Still take her back. <laughs> Twitter, is, um, Twitter is Black China. Wow. That's me. And I'm wow. Rob. Wow. Oh, wow. Rob. Wow. Rob. Wow. No, you know Rob's still got a soft spot in his heart for, for Black China. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, of course. that's me. Wow. So I don't understand. In, in the realms of things and what I see, the amount of news publication using Twitter as a source... I don't understand why it isn't doing as well within the marketplace compared to Facebook and all the others and Snapchat because it does seem like everyone is kind of going to Twitter to get their to memes or get their source of news or to validate something or other. They Twitter is an important factor within that collection of news, so mm. I don't know. Well, well, Someone's trying to make Twitter yeah. look bad. Yeah, I just want to say, for starters, Twitter ain't going nowhere, though. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter's sticking around with us. They're still making millions, like £440 million. Pounds, well, yeah, I thought that with Vine. I thought Vine wasn't going going to go anywhere. I thought that was a, I think that was a strategic move from them. Mm. I, don't, I don't think that was, a, oh, it's so bad, we've got to get rid of it. I, yeah. think it was a, I think it was a streamlining. They bought them in, got the technology in. Because mm. you can still Vine stuff, but Vine's not there. You no, can still Vine. Create Vine video. You can still use the Vine app to make videos that loop. Vine? Mm. Vine's gone. The app's still there. You, you can still use it to, to create Viney videos, but just the whole way you post it and stuff. You can only really post your Vine type videos on Twitter. I think they were kind of trying to edge everyone over to Are Twitter. Are you sure? Because some of the Vine links of my old videos, they don't exist anymore. Yeah, so the Vine links links to the Vine timeline. But the app, if you have it in your phone, you can yeah. still create six second videos that loop, which you can then share to Twitter. 
Cause, so cause Vine deleted the app and then reinstalled it. They updated the app and got rid of... It's like Twitter keeping Twitter, but okay. getting rid of the... There's no timelines. So let me get this, so let me get this straight. There was a period where, t- where, t- where Vine... Had its own timelines like Twitter, yeah? No, there was a period where Vine told all of its users, its power users, saying we're going. So yeah. they actually migrated all their users to other sites. Yeah, Twitter. So that's why you say King Batch was on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's it. So why did they do that if they were still... Because they were, because sh- I don't think there was, rev- well, I don't know why specifically, but there was not, it was hard to make revenue on Vine. Mm-hmm. But it's a slightly easier to make revenue on Twitter. And. So in the last moment, they baby. got saved by someone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and who, who was that by? Who? What? Vine? Yeah. No, they're not being saved. The app's still there, but you, it's not got the same. So you can log into the app. Billy, you've got the app on your phone, haven't you? Yeah. Let's talk, talk, talk us through what Billy's doing with Vine. Funk. Okay. So the listener is with you. So Biggie. Billy is lo- okay. So Vine has actually changed that. It used to be a green logo, it's now a black logo. And okay, it's still, yeah, it's still there. You can still film in it. Mm-hmm. Still makes loopy still, videos. Still got the same kind of six second loop. Okay, yeah, still but there. You, but you can create the videos, but you have to share the videos to Twitter or another social media platform. Okay. And that's, so, what they, that's that's what you used to have as well. Yeah, so they just, but they've kind of gotten rid of the whole timelines that you'd post it to, mm-hmm. probably to just say, well, this is the same as Twitter. Let's get everyone over on Twitter to to to, to strengthen Twitter's numbers. But what I'm getting at is that the one chance it had of ever being profitable, which was this user base, mm-hmm. people like the power users like yeah. your King Batch and all those kind of online comedians, it it forced them to migrate to other platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they took their user base with them. Yeah, like Twitter. They probably would have gone to Twitter. It's the closest thing. They probably would have had a verification. But anyway, so so tw- anyway, sorry. So Twitter ain't gonna die. Ain't gonna go anywhere. But to grow zero in three months is is quite a concerning number, isn't it? Because clearly they haven't got all of the users. They haven't got everybody in the world logged in. Mm. Um, you know, they're not like on eight billion. But define define get... dead though, because I mean, Vine's as good as dead. Then yeah, if Vine's no, dead. If, if, if no one's using it, it's still there. But yeah, vi- yeah, it's Vine... like SoundCloud now. Yeah. It's dying a slow death. Yeah. But Twitter is... Twitter ain't dying though. Twitter's with us. Twitter's, Twitter's about... It's still making millions and millions. But I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why do you think Twitter is seeing a drop in its in its uptake of users? I mean, yeah, you could just say it's skewed numbers, but do you think there's a reason why not many people are logging in? Or why would you not log into Twitter? Or why would there be less people signing up to Twitter now? Because I find it as... It's, it's, it's quite a pure place. I like it. I feel like it's quite raw and real. I think it's what it requires of the user to be more politically engaged and more socially engaged. It isn't as fun and, and I mean, you can get your jokes and your memes off Twitter, but a lot of the time there is a lot of heavy stuff on there, which um, on a degree of seriousness of one to 10, you're probably looking at about a seven or an eight kind of thing. Facebook is probably the, the most serious because obviously you've got your family members and it's talking about real stuff. Uh, um, yeah, my baby mother took my kids again and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you don't really ever see tweets about that, do you? No, you don't so, really see yeah. tweets about that. But yeah. that just shows the level of seriousness that people are posting on Facebook. Twitter is kind of up there in that in that level. What you what you're beginning to find is that social media is a place of escapism. Period. People are going on Instagram and they want to see the pictures of the that place in the Maldives that they are never going to get to in their lifetime. That that um that new six pack they're never going to get. That six pack, that Bugatti, that new Bugatti, Bugatti that you're never going to get. They've only made one of, and yeah, the one that they that made. Number of likes you're never going to get. Exactly. So, I guess people want to kind of get lost in that that utopia through their social media, vicariously living their life through others. Exactly, and I feel maybe Twitter isn't the spot for that. Twitter, the, the 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 chief people running Twitter are tweets like, which come from places like Donald Trump mm. or the Kremlin, mm. or someone saying that oh North Korea is testing missiles again, which yeah. people don't really want to kind of engage with. So, whereas Instagram is where life's good, good yeah. life's good, isn't it? You post yeah. on Instagram, yeah, nice holiday. Looking good, positivity, but you're saying Twitter's where it's a bit more raw, a bit more real. So you think that's why might, there might be less take up there? Pretty much. Okay. That's just my theory. I think that's what I like about Twitter. I feel like if something's going on in the world, and I do, I am in, usually I don't 
have to, but if I'm interested in finding out what people think, yeah, get on a little hashtag and have a little look yeah. and, and see what the general you, consensus you, is. You described the perfect word for it. It's realer. That yeah. is, that's what the reality is. Yeah. Twitter is giving you a real um, cross section of the world. You're getting the good. You're getting the jokes. You're getting the the fact that yeah, you got your footballers and 222 million and all that kind of stuff and then yeah on Twitter you are going to see the latest videos of police violence and mm. all that kind of stuff and yeah. Donald Trump telling the police to use more violence yeah. and all that kind of stuff but you're never going to see that on Instagram Yeah, on Instagram I don't think I've ever seen a post about anything news related or Donald Trump or yeah. it doesn't make it to Instagram because actively Instagram is what people are choosing to display about their life yeah. and what people are choosing to display about their life are the best bits yeah Hashtag good times. That's what it is. Hashtag good times. Good times. Yeah. Wow. Very, I find that, that's very interesting. Mm. The psychology mm. of social media. Yeah. Yeah. The rawness is good though. I do like the rawness. And maybe, maybe the anonymity that you get on Twitter mm. is, yeah, side effect to that is trolling and bullying and stuff. But yeah. it does give people more of a voice or more freedom to oh, feel like they can see what they percent. want. But yeah. how is that going to affect Twitter? I mean, if Twitter goes, we're all fucked. Because then you won't have anything that represents that on the social media yeah. world. Yeah. Because a lot of people are kind of like hell-bent on not joining Facebook. No, I don't want to join Facebook. So, or because Facebook is... Facebook is fun for me, man. I like Facebook. It's, it's fun times. Yeah, I like Facebook. But yeah. for some, the especially when Facebook kind of put that that sanction where everyone had to use their real name yeah and it was just kind of like oh i can't hide behind the guys anymore yeah yeah guys as in (laughs) g-y-s-e hide behind my guys i hide behind (laughs) no one bro um all right cool well facebook have they've been working on their own things because they've got a lot of money so they've got an r&d department that's constantly working on bits and bobs you know too much money facebook bought oculus you know what i mean it's now facebook oculus now there's a story that's come out we spoke about sensationalism in the last episode where Facebook shut down their AI programs after it appeared to create its own language that they could, that only they could understand. Okay. Now, this is how the story came out. Now, the chatbots created their own changes to English, which made it easier for them to understand, but didn't make sense to the humans. So there were two robots that were actually talking to each other. Is that how it's reported or is that your interpretation this of it? This is how it's been, this is, I'm, I'm just reading the article, okay, okay. Like, how it's kind of been written. Um, the chatbots changed their they changed they created their own language that only the chatbots could understand humans can understand it yeah, the chatbots can yeah. understand each other now the but ta- what, was, what, what did they say the rationale was the task that was set was there for them to trade items with one another so each item was being given a numerical value so for example they were teaching the robots to bar so they gave one robot uh, a cola which was worth one pound and one robot uh, a Fanta which is another drink, lemonade, which is worth two pounds. And then they might give the first robot another thing that was worth two pounds. And they just have different items okay. and they'd have to try to trade between with, with each other. Um, so it soon became apparent though with the language that they started to understand what each other, what each other meant. Yeah. And like the, 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 art, the first article was just like, oh my gosh, Skynet is here. But yeah. I don't, first of all, I just want to say I'm very impressed by the programmers yeah. that program stuff to make that happen. Yeah. Now, when we first saw this story, we were, we were all like... No, you have to explain the Skynet bit because at some stage they switched out from talking in yeah. English and they started to talk in their own language. This this is the language. So, the, so, so for example, I'll give you an example of the language. But they're called st- Bob they, and Alice. But they started speaking English. That's the problem. That's, that's what we're getting at. The language that they were created in... Yeah. The language they started to use yeah. was an English-styled language because it had been programmed by English people. So I'll give you an example of a negotiation. Bob and Alice. There's, so two, Bob there's, says, there's two articles running then. So, but, you know, it's the first thing. It's the one article. Bob said, I can, I, I, everything else. Alice yeah. says, balls have zero to me, 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 to, to me, like that. And that's the kind of conversations that yeah. they were having that yeah. weren't English. That's not yeah. English. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So those are the articles that they did to, to, to shut down. So that, the article that came out was, Skynet is yeah. here. Okay. But first of all, I just want to say I'm impressed yeah. that they've that they've taught robots to speak their own language. I mean, what I know you and Billy had thought quite interesting thoughts when these first dropped, didn't it? Yeah, because me and Billy saw an article which reported it like this in layman's terms. Robots started to talk in English, discovered that they could um, 
communicate in privacy and develop their own language, which yeah. obviously was um, a way that they were showing covertness. But the language that they um, um, developed wasn't decipherable by the programmers. So that's why they shut them down. Mm. Mm. But that's why it, it seemed a bit kind of like it got people on edge yeah. because the AI was being so sophisticated that obviously who knows where this could go. So yeah. that's where the whole kind of like... Well, it's it's the, interesting because it still, it still doesn't make sense to us. We can guess what they were saying, yeah. but we will never really truly know. And it kind of makes me think like, and even though the article came out and was like, mm. oh my gosh, guy, mm. it? When really it's just Facebook created this stuff to work and it kind of created its own language. Like, for example, saying I, I, I five times might mean five times I. Mm-hmm. Or to me, to me, to me might mean I want something five times. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really working for them for them because it's... Well, it's just the way that humans, we might create short times. Like, if I message you, I might, I, might, I won't say I'd like one, two, three, four, five cups of uh, spoons of sugar in my drink. I'd yeah. say, can I have five times sugar in my drink? Yeah. Get me. You'd me- you, Five times teaspoons of sugar in my drink, you'd get that. Um it's got me thinking though, we're going to start getting to this age now where computers are cleverer than us. Yeah. There's certain computers that we're going to build that are going to give us answers to questions, Mm. but we don't know how they got the answers to the questions. So they're going to be cleverer than us. Yeah. But we are not going to know how they come to these conclusions. I think, I mean, I'm no linguistics expert, which probably means that anything I say from this point onwards may be null and void. Own it. (laughs) But, Own but, but, but it. (laughs) but, But stick with me here, people. When people develop languages, whether they're shortcuts or whatever, it's, I think the main crux of it is for privacy and covertness. The coding thing mm. is very much intrinsic. So um, back in the days in school, we had pig Latin. And pig Latin or back... Other guy or, never go, brother get okay. slaving gang. So no, that, that, that yeah. was, there was back slang and there was yeah. pig Latin. So um, 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 a book could be Ukbe. Yeah. Yeah. So... There was that, but the whole premise of it was so that no one else outside could yeah. hear it. So, if these computers are doing that, then obviously the the main objective is to shut everyone else yeah. outside. It isn't a case of taking a shortcut. You're very, you're being very optimistic in your in your assertion of why they developed. I know why that. I know what you're door. talking about. I agree yeah. with you. And when yeah. that happens, I think there's unplug that bitch exactly. I think there's a more insidious reason behind. Uh, that's just how they are. But, but I said, I said this, it will happen. I've said this happen. before. We're going to be the first generation that's going to bring about our own extinction because yeah. we've created it. Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> In a fucked up way. I remember to yeah. laugh when the, yeah. the machine's got his gun in my head. Yeah. <laughs> how did yeah, I get yeah, here? Yeah. So fuck you know. You used to make toast, you know, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Spit on it. Um, yeah. No, it's it's going to happen. There will be a point where there might be some covertness or hiding. But not with this specific thing. So everyone was like, oh my gosh, the world's going to... And some very, some very... What surprised me with this is some very, very, very plugged in people in terms of programming and tech yeah. were like just reading the first line of the article and sharing it. And I was like, oh, come on, man. Like, but even when you read the whole article, I mean, you're assuming that they've read I've the read first... The, I've, read the, I've read the article. Basically, Yeah, I heard about it a few weeks ago on like a podcast and yeah. I read about it. Yeah. Then I read about it again. So I've kind of been following the story. And, and you then don't when think I, it's worrying even when, when you I read the details? Spread, yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's... If, <laughs> if, said, yeah, yeah, they're going to kill us. <laughs> if, if they programmed the robots to do anything other than barter, then yeah. But they're only programmed to barter. They're not, they've not been uh, programmed with a complexity to do anything else. You're assuming that that is all they've been programmed with. It's like when you go to an airport and you yeah. say, did you pack your luggage? Yeah, but Their I, assumption is that you have packed all your luggage, but if someone else puts something in there, i.e. if there is code in there yeah. to go beyond yeah. what they've been asked to do, yeah. then you're going to get the situation. Yeah, but every article I read about coding, I can just put whatever I want into it. Oh, they programmed the machine to do oranges and it slapped someone in the face. Aha, did they program it to hit human? I can't do that. I have to just go off, off the data that I got in it. Yeah. I can't start adding bits of flavoring because yeah, if true. I do, I'll just... I don't know if I come out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I come out of my house, but hopefully that's kind of like put it out there that it's possible, man. Robots can talk their own language. What are your thoughts on it, Billy? Can I just refer to, uh, just reading the article again, just, just to why they shut the um, chatbots down. Yeah. Um, they shut the chatbots down because they wanted chatbots that could talk to humans 
rather than each other, rather than to each other. Mm-hmm. They wanted to create like some sort of language where the AI would understand what I'm asking it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So they shut it down because they made a shorthand, and then we can understand shorthand, which then means that the bot doesn't understand what we're yeah. saying. Yeah. So so basically, what they were trying to do, what I'm reading into it is, you know, they got the Facebook store. Yeah. You got to barter with another human for stuff. Yeah. What if Facebook could barter with you with algorithms that are way more complex? They're going to make great amounts of money. But you just said that they shut it down because just they wasn't ignored. Doing what they they ignored do. exactly. Yeah. They programmed it to do they something it and wrong. they ignored it. The AI, you're saying they programmed it wrong. They did. They it, programmed it. Just, it. If it, it didn't just do what you meant it to, they programmed it wrong. If I if I program a toaster yeah. to make toast and the toaster burns a toast or Put, gives me back bread they've programmed it wrong no but it didn't burn the toast it didn't do something okay like that. if did... i program it to, to make toast and it makes and it and it decides to heat the whole room instead yeah and that's I've, I've programmed it wrong but you wouldn't say that also that the ai just was input to ignore the initial yeah, instruction it's not that complex when it, when it is that if it was a complex operation and they gave it the parameters to do that i agree that could happen but it, it is Mark, too simple. We've got machine. We've got computers that can beat humans in chess. Yeah. So it wasn't a chess machine. Now we're two chess machi- machines. If they started speaking their own language, <laughs> now I'm interested because they've got the complexities to work their way around a human mind. Okay. That would be interesting. Now, if somebody accidentally slipped them a bit of code. Mm-hmm. Okay. There we go. But that then, could be interesting. But then you have to look at the concept of bartering. What is the concept of bartering? It is to kind of. It's no different from the concept of poker. You're having to read yep. the situation and... They didn't do it. They, they weren't good, they weren't good <laughs> well, enough. It's just like they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. You know, what can you say? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I was really happy to read this. They were... <laughs> well, apparently the, the queen, our queen, mm-hmm. uh, drinks gin yeah. before lunch. Mm-hmm. Wine at lunch. Champagne and a dry martini in the evening. She needs to go AA. Well, that equates to six units a day, according to the Independent. Now, officially, with government guidelines, that makes the Queen a binge drinker. She don't drive anyway, so she's all right. I was like, you don't drive. <laughs> all you do is go to parties. Yeah. You got a list. We got this shake hands all day. I'd want to drink. I'd want to drink. Turn up. So the Queen's a binge drinker. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about our, our monarch being? somebody who drinks more than the average person is that quite british of her not setting a good example but it probably explains a lot because the queen's always had a few injuries with her hip so mm. what we're saying is she had a, a few too many stellas and fell down the stairs is this is this what we're getting at i was broken it down doing a dutty wine and, and threw her <laughs> hip out is that what it is should the should the queen be drinking so much should she be teetotal um i don't know She's got nothing else to do. I'd be getting smashed if I was the queen. <laughs> if I was the king, what have you got to do? That's what kings used to do back in the day. Like Henry VIII, I reckon Henry VIII was always on the juice. I reckon he'd wake up, have yeah. some ale, yeah, eat like a leg of whatever it is, something regal. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine that though, going into Buckingham Palace and having to carefully knock on the door because she might be inebriated, yeah. surrounded by a load of bottles. Like, get the fuck out! Or her trying to get in the front door with her key, yeah. <laughs> missing the keyhole. Imagine going home to Buckingham Palace. Charles, Charles, I've lost my fucking key. Let me in. <laughs> oh, wicked. Oh, man. So she's on six units a day. Yeah. Good old Lizzie. Better, look, better check her purse. Might have some pills in there yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good, good old, did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. She's an old lady. Yeah. Just have a little half an aspirin a day to keep the blood moving around. That's what she, that's what she calls it. <laughs> a little... Have a little half, have a little half aspirin. She's got pills. that has got a little crown on it. Yeah, have it, her own pill. Yeah, Queen Lizzie's. You got, got any of them Lizzie's? Get any of them Lizzie's? Put these on your tongue. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, NASA stated during one of their last meetings, a gentleman called Professor Thomas Zuckber- Zuckbergen mm-hmm. uh, said that aliens do exist, and he says that we reckon we reckon we're about to find the true existence of aliens. We're about to make the announcement. We're on the verge of making one of the most profound and unprecedented discoveries in history. Can I... I, I, I want to go deep here for a moment. As I always do. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen the film Prometheus? Yeah, I love it. This is one of the best films. This, You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. It's on my top five. What of, else is of, in the top of, five? I don't, I don't. Of creationist films. <laughs> huh? Of creationist no, films. films of all time. Okay. Serious. Like, 
Billy shaking his head. No, Billy, it is. Do you know why? Yeah, because the amount of debate I've had off of this film, because it, it really, really poses some serious questions. And one of those questions is, why the, eh, are we here? And that film is probably the most logical in a science fiction sense explanation as to our being the fact that we are here just based off someone being like oh i wonder what happens if we do this kind of thing mm. that's the whole prometheus argument mm. um so when scientists kind of say things like that i'm just like yes because it makes so much effing sense like we're literally looking at a like this infinitesimal universe all that space and you're trying to say we're the only ones out here get out of here man get out of here you wouldn't walk into um somewhere like i don't know westfield and not see anyone walk around 20 minutes not see anyone and not have a weird feeling that there could be someone within this building that you just can't see it's just the same premise you can't have a situation where there's parts of that space that you've never seen and yet still believe that you are the only person occupying it. Well, the great thing about that theory that they de deliver in, Promethe in Prometheus is that it kind of follows Occam's razor and Occam's razor is this theory that is basically a simple answer. The most simple answer is probably the most likely the right one. Mm -hmm. Now, an answer to the question of how we got here being somebody did a science experiment, mm -hmm. yeah, I think is quite feasible, yeah, in some ways, because why not? Mm -hmm. it, however, you put it, God, whatever, yeah. made it in seven days. If you want to think about it, that, yeah. still an experiment, yeah, clearly not done yet. Mm -hmm. Or somebody else came down and poured a little bit of juice into a into a waterfall, yeah, and uh, killed them, killed themselves, yeah, and just thought, well, let's have a go, let's see what happens, yeah is also feasible. And I think that simple start to the story is great because it allows them to go in many directions with it. So when I hear that, when I saw that, I was like, nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting, simple, yeah. quite smooth way into the film. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting entrance into that universe. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? And obviously it explains as well, just, I mean, to add to that, I've, and this is a little insight into the way I think, I feel like we've had alien involvement in our development years back because the greatest minds here now and probably in the future can't answer how we we've got to the developments of the pyramids yeah yeah like, i mean billy billy's looking at me like funk you crazy you know stick with me billy like the pyramid structure is absolutely incredible and i don't think enough people have actually begun to take it in oh the, it's a lovely prism standing in the middle of the desert like no, look deeper. It's hollow. It's got chambers. Where was the cranes to, to? Where was the manpower to? Like there was too many questions that at that point in time, architecturally, don't make sense, and yet there they are standing longer than buildings that are getting blown over by tsunamis and other natural forces. These pyramids have stood there. So you telling me they put they picked the right materials that would last hundreds and thousands of years. It's amazing. Here's a question. What if, um, I don't know, some big uh, architectural company came and said, I want to knock down the pyramid and build a block of, block of flats here, <laughs> right? What would happen if you're saying, if an alien did it, would, would there be alien invasion to prevent you from locking ah. down that pyramid? Billy's got an idea. What what Billy should have done is presented that to the USA. Yeah. Presented that to 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 to, to Egypt. Yeah. yeah. Presented that to the UK. And then what they should have done is is covertly created a fake bidding war to knock down the pyramids. Yeah. Put up scaffolding all over it and say, to be knocked down, put pictures up of fancy apartment blocks with like penthouse suites, just to piss off the aliens. <laughs> have a massive fucking demolishing <laughs> ball yeah and they're like yes we can't wait to smash this down and then see if the aliens turn up like right before they're yeah. about to get it, let the check that's a very good idea billy but we wouldn't be able to understand the aliens when they say that this is a listed building we won't understand 
It's all right. Just getting them on, on the line with one of our Facebook chatbots. <laughs> we'll be cracking away in no time. Yeah. What well, if they came down and said, excuse me, we're part of the Inter- Intergalactic Listing Commissions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a good idea, you know, Billy. What, just fuck, fuck with aliens like that? And when they get here, say, ha ha, like yeah. that. Reaction might not be as good as we thought. And then Ashton Kudger come out and go, punked. <laughs> yeah. I think the real secret is that there's actually a lease on the pyramids which last five billion years yeah, so, yeah. so we've still got a few there's a leasehold there's a leasehold what if we're doing it all wrong what if we're not using the pyramids right yeah like you know should we should everything else be pyramid they're like we've given them the freaking yeah the, the blueprint why are they building these square blocks that fall down all the time <laughs> I mean the pyramids and the Great Wall of China are easily some of the most impressive works yeah. by man mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. crazy crazy apart from the Simpsons also crazy great creation by men but yeah man so you you're a really big alien believer because of that then yeah any other things that make you think aliens have been around it's just the whole watching the desert theory the theological argument that the design of us is too complicated to have just happened Mm. that we had to have been created Mm. just like you create it's just like do you know the 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 premise the idea that if you find if you're walking through the desert and you find a pocket watch there had to have been a design or designer behind that pocket watch because when you open up that pocket watch and you look at all the the intricate mechanisms and everything like that. Someone I mean, had to design it. Someone had to design it to build it. So it's the same thing with humans. The way we have the position of your eyebrows, mm. the your eyelashes, the fact that the way, I don't know if you know about your eyebrows, your eyebrows are, are there to actually stop sweat from getting into your eyes. The The fact that you've got hair, so um, why the fuck are you cutting them off then and painting them on, you <laughs> dickhead? Why are you tattooing them on? You're going to get sweat in your eyes when you're in a club. Maybe you those fool. maybe those ladies want more... Um, Moisture in your eyes. What's, what's it called? Aerodynamic foreheads. Nah, it's unreasonable. <laughs> unreasonable. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> they want to create a waterfall off their, off their forehead right Ugh. now. <laughs> Ugh. Uninterrupted. Ugh. Ugh. But yeah, I mean, the, the, literally... The way we're so complex, it just has to be some sort of design creator, which kind of leads onto that whole Prometheus film. You haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a great flick and make sure you watch it with someone because you're going to debate some things about that film. Do you think that we could have had all the technology to make it all of ourselves? Yeah, because like yeah. Uh, ancient Egyptians were around for like 6,000 years, I think, or more. Yeah. Do you think that we might have just, it happens, we're all human. Yeah. Something might happen and we just forgot how we did it as humans. We just lost the plans. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Like something happened, like a big flood, all the clever oh, people died. All the clever people went yeah, to a party somewhere yeah. and the pyramid collapsed. Two and Carmen, you, you seen them blueprints? So look, yeah. I put them down there, like, yeah. fucking God. Because they had weed back then. You know, they're hitting the blunt. They could have forgot. Yes. <laughs> I put it on the back of the, sh- of the of that paper over there. Oh, I use that as a shopping list. Can <laughs> <laughs> happen. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That's, yeah. That's a left reach. It on the train. Yeah, left on <laughs> left, it, left it on the train. Yeah. It's gonna happen. These things happen. Right. Left on the train to Babylon. Have you ever smashed a phone screen? Yeah. That's Bill- why I got screen protector now. Billy Boy? Nope, never. I have. So that's two out of three. So that's How many times have you smashed your uh, once? Yeah, my once. one was a bitch, man. I like I had I had my earpiece on and I stepped out of the car and it got tangled in the seatbelt and it just like Do you know when something falls in slow motion? Yeah. yeah. Mine was so much worse. I feel like I've dropped my phone off a first floor building and survived. I knocked it off a table. It just went. Yeah. And I was like, what? How'd that fucking break? Yeah. It did. Now the Melbourne, University of Melbourne researchers are probably going to save a lot of people a lot of stress. They're developing a self-healing gel that could prevent phone screams from permanent gel- is this, damage. Is this the nanotechnology? Basically, a superhero could drink this and become self-heal man. <laughs> So these product projects can these products can heal a crack or even a cut and regain their original strength. Yeah. Um, Why does self heal man sound like a Jamaican superhero? Self heal man. <laughs> uh, Jamaican DC. I want the rights to that. Self heal man. Self heal man. Rah. Who are you? Self heal man. <laughs> Uh, basically they change shape when triggered by being swollen in a solvent so if you put a bit of water on them it helps them come back and they're calling it 4d printing 
self-heal phone screens. I like the sound of this. I really like the sound of this. But if we were Apple and we made a little bit of money switching up phone screens. Now you're talking. We'd buy the patent to yeah. this. And what would we do? We'll burn that shit. <laughs> incinerate it. <laughs> We'd find out where the plans for the fucking Great Pyramids of Ch- <laughs> China. Exactly, exactly. Of Egypt went, went. The Great Wall of China went and we'd lose that shit yeah, there. Yeah, that's going straight in that room. Yeah. Fuck that. And anyone who ever even knows about this. I think Apple have got like a team of hitmen. And they wipe out your friends, your family, anyone who knows the information. It's literally like those films. I've got this. Please run. Yeah. Pew, pew. Oh, well, someone's got, someone's got, someone's <laughs> got, a silencer. Pew, pew. someone's got an unlimited power source. <laughs> hey, I've just here to unveil my battery that never needs charging. Exactly. They get kidnapped. What film is that? Is that a Tom Cruise film? Something like Night that. and day. There you go. Yeah, it's one of them. Or all of them. But yeah, self-healing phone screen. What else should be self-healing? Apart um, from us. Anything self-healing or like something with unlimited life is never going to make it into the commercial market. Never. Car. Self-healing, self-healing car would be good. Yeah. Self-healing tyres. I don't even think bulletproof cars work. <laughs> what, why? Why don't they work? <laughs> Who wants a car that's, that's bulletproof that actually works? Then every like military and I, th- I mean, I don't think they work. Really? Yeah. Obama's got a bomb-proof car. Ain't been tested on him though, has it? Luckily not. But apparently you little throw a little grenade over it, under it, and it can still it can still roll. It can just go, huh, what, and? Well, this is the thing. Have you noticed that tanks aren't impenetrable? No. Sorry, they, are, yeah, they yeah. are penetrable, yeah. yeah so yeah. a tank, a tank can be done in. Yeah, oh yeah. If you drop a nuke on the president's beast, it's no, going to blow if, up. But not even a nuke. I mean, tanks can be like... Yeah penetrated yeah but they're not designed to be they're designed to be impenetrable yeah so the same way the same day somebody designed an impenetrable tank somebody said let's des- let's design penetrable bullets exactly <laughs> to get through the tank so it's just like there is nothing on the market which actually so is you, fit for purpose so you're you're saying that if you were the head of security you'd say to obama just walk <laughs> get a segue <laughs> save a bit of cash what i'm saying is, even when they develop these um new washing up powders that's supposed to get out every single stain there's, yeah. like, there's always going to be some stain they can't bloody get out oh my gosh do you think like source companies deliberately have meetings where they're like right they've just fucking made us something that can get us out of 30 degrees yeah yeah, 20 degrees yeah. we need to make a source stain that stays in <laughs> at 5 degrees <laughs> put more red colouring in that in that ketchup yeah yeah do you think these sorts of conversations go on like we need to have more stainy food <laughs> Or we need to make a bottle lid that sprays ketchup everywhere every time you open it. <laughs> you're, you're a conspiracy theorist. You are a conspiracy theorist. So, Funk, speaking of like conspiracies and truth and stuff like that, mm-hmm. are you a, would you say you're a binge watcher when it comes to TV? Because no. I know you're a heavy gamer. Yeah. So what about a TV? No. How much TV do you do with like a night? None. No. Seriously? From the guy that watches Game of Thrones. Oh, 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 I'm, oh. St- I'm still counting streaming, oh, okay. streaming, not yeah. just sitting. All right. in front of the so I don't TV. watch. I don't watch any terrestrial TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's yeah. such a thing anymore, um, yeah. because we've got so many channels now. Yeah. But yeah, your series on Netflix and whatnot. I'd say on average, I'd, I'd go by week, probably about four hours a week, three to four hours a week. Cool. And when it's like, like four episodes, when it's not something that's you're only getting the hottest episode of like Game of Thrones. If there's yeah. like a few episodes, would you say you're more likely to watch them both at the same time? No, if there's nothing like uh, Archer's on in the background. Yeah. Just Archer. But would, like, say you're watching a show, would you put put a couple episodes on though? You wouldn't watch just one? Yeah. Okay. Because 80% of us in the UK do that now, apparently. What do you mean? M- watch more than one episode? Uh-huh. We don't just watch an episode. We watch back to back. Like before, the only version of binge you could do was called an omnibus yeah. for your soaps, yeah. innit? Yeah. And I, I remember being a kid, I hated EastEnders. I hated and Sundays. I was like, Mom, why is EastEnders still? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's the omnibus. Shut up, son. Yeah. <laughs> but they're rolling it out across channels because anyone out there who has young children, like mm. myself, mm. Uh, stations like Cartoon Network... Mm-hmm. They have this back to back to back to back thing of yeah. um, adventure time, back to back, regular yeah. show, back to yeah. back, Clarence, back to back, Powerpuff Girls. We're going to show six or seven episodes back to back. So yeah. they've kind of got into that thing whereby 
if it works for adults that we can make them sit in front of the TV, um, of course it's going to work for yeah. kids. If we put their TV sh- favorite TV yeah. show and we don't change it, and they have like Friends Day, yeah, and stuff like that, where it's just friends all day long. Yeah. So you're part of the seventy percent of people that find it relaxing. Like you, you do a bit of binge watching whilst being like say active, but then yeah. you have some of the time where the TV watches you more than you watch it. Sometimes like Archer. Oh in the yeah, background, yeah. yeah. Okay, the, the, cool. the TV has replaced the radio. Okay. Yeah, the radio used to be on in the background. Now the TV is yeah. on in the background. I like to do that with reruns. So I literally, I'll put on a little bit of Rick and Morty season one and just have it on in the background and like yeah. go, ha <laughs> yeah. ha, and then carry on with what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? The funny thing about that is that you could be getting on with your day, look back up at the TV and you, you haven't really lost the storyline. You can still pick up from where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're still back in with it. Still I don't know if that it. means that's, that's poor writing or... Sometimes, yeah. I mean, if I've watched it before, because I've watched it before, but sometimes with certain stories, yeah, you can do a little half an episode, go go for a piss and leave it on, come yeah, back, yeah. still follow it. You yeah. get me? Game of Thrones, though, I don't know. They're like 35 people in an episode. Well, I've missed like half a season of Archer and I still know what's going on. So it's like... <laughs> yeah, the new Archer's good, you know? Yeah. You What, you in the, the latest season? Uh, What am I up to? I'm up to the one where the, the black girl's pregnant. Oh, Lana Kane. Yeah. Lana Kane. I swear that's like a medicine somewhere. Yeah. Lana Kane. But yeah, yeah. I find her sexy. You know? <laughs> I know she doesn't exist. She's, Chris, She's a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I find her fit. I'm like, why can't she be real? Oh, the woman that plays her, what is she in? Scandal? Is she in Scandal? She used to be in um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, that's She's it. She's a comedian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What else is she in? Aisha Tyler. Yeah. She is I like a... the mum. The mum's voice. She she sounds very familiar. She sounds like an alcoholic mum, innit? Yeah. <laughs> She does sound like an alcoholic mum. They hit the drink. Um, Aisha Taylor. She's in, yeah, Criminal Minds. Okay. It, Criminal Minds. I don't know why I thought I saw her in Scandal. But yeah. All right. So more stats about this um, straight up mad amount of binge watching that we do. How many over 65 do you think? 65 binge watch percentage. I'm, I'm, I would say less, obviously. Yeah, because they just fall asleep. Yeah. 16%. Okay. 16%. They just fall asleep. <laughs> Ethel, 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 Ethel. It's just the opening credits, Ethel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I me. Mean, what? Um, I have. To, I don't understand why old people's television has not changed so much over the last few years. Like, <laughs> excuse me. What is old people's television? Archers. Is it the no, television? that's a radio show. Sorry. Gar- what's the, what's that gardening one? Is that uh, anything that's not a flat screen? Old people's television. No, it's just like you know the TVs that had the the back, the, the big, the big back. Oh yeah, uh, the television, big back TVs, televisions with booty, CRT, <laughs> CRT screens. Now, I don't know, like gardening shows, like they never oh. really have like cool gardening. Like, yo, these flowers will bring bitches over to your house. They've got like, the best numbers, though. Do you? Yeah. Would you ever hear of a of, of a, a time where uh, songs of praise doesn't get good numbers? Yeah, that's the religion though, isn't it? The songs of praise gets great numbers. That's the religious fact. It's just things like garden as well. Like I want some someone to be like garden as well. Yeah, today we're going to have a show where I'm going to show you how to grow all of these nice herbs which taste great with your gin and tonic. Then I'll be involved. But it's like, <laughs> let's have a look at James's garden. James has got some lovely rose bushes. What's the um the antiques one? Antiques road show. That's got some great numbers as well. Yeah, that's just lots of fucking chances though, isn't it? How much is this worth? Is it? Is it going to be a lot? <laughs> It's going to be a lot. You call them chances. They are fucking chances, mate. That's all they care about. They should call it, how much is it going to be? How much would it be? Oh, I found this lying around and I just wanted to get it valued. And you know what I love? Yeah, when I watch Antiques Roadshow sometimes is where someone has something that looks fucking wicked, like a golden ring with a fat diamond in it. The yeah. diamonds, the diamond, the, the lights dancing off the diamonds, yeah? So, um, he goes, oh, this looks amazing. And they'll look closely at it. Go, oh, it's got a little sign here. Okay, so this was one of the first ever gold-plated rings that ever oh. came out with a very well shined cubic zirconia. And they're like, yeah. how much is it worth? Like, Fucking chance. How much is it worth? It probably is about 50 pounds at auction. And they go, oh, do you oh, believe them when you. they say that? Though? I think they're savage. I think they, they tell them that and they keep it and then they shut it for like 50 grand on the market. <laughs> oh, that's the one where they buy it off them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know what that, that one is. Uh, Dev's been on that bargain hunt. That's where the they one. buy stuff. And yeah. sell it. That's all right. That's got a bit of edginess to it because you kind of want them to win. You want yeah. them to, to get this stuff and, and sell it a bit. But because I'm a bit sadistic, I still like it on bargain hunt where they go around this junkyard or sorry, auction house, pick up bits and then sell, sell them on auction. I still giggle a little bit when they make like minus 20 pounds on that. <laughs> <laughs> so you would say that the over 65 are more loyal 
watches of TV then? I think the reason they're more loyal with TV and radio, yeah, is because they can't be bothered to get up and change a channel. I was just about to say that. <laughs> you can't be. When I'm 65, I'm putting on a channel that I know is going to be worthwhile and I don't yeah. have to get up and move for. Even though everything will probably be voice activated by yeah. then. I don't want to have to get up and change the channel. Oh, Siri TV. That sounds cool. Hey, possible. Very, very possible. Trace what, possible. Why isn't that here yet? Like, seriously, who needs a fucking remote control when you could just say, uh, yeah. Channel one, Sky, Google, Sky Sports. Google Assistant's the closest at the moment in terms of filtering through online stuff. But for terrestrial or regular TV, I reckon Sky should have it locked down. Um, cable should have it locked down in America. But with, with Google now, Home yeah. Assistant, you can be like, Google, I like. Uh, I like Prometheus. And you can link it to your TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you had a Shield, you had the Shield remote in your hand, yeah. you, there's also something supposed to be coming out called the Spot by Shield, which you plug into an omnidirectional microphone. <laughs> Spies. Uh, and you just say, <laughs> hey, Google. And it says, yo, what's up, Funk? And you say, uh, uh, I like Stranger Things. Could you find me more stuff like that? Or play me the latest episode of Stranger Things. Or play me that show which has so-and-so in it. Or show me the, some Sandra Bullock films or something Switch like that. Switch it onto Pornhub now. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, Pornhub. They, they, you know they're innovators. They, you know they're innovators. We're waiting for the Pornhub app. <laughs> waiting for that Pornhub app. Uh, anyway, I've been Marcus Bronzy. This has been How to Kill an Hour. I've been Funk Butcher. This has been How to Kill an Hour. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. And we'll be back in your ear holes. Peace. <laughs>